Hello everyone, this is the November update for the Denver market. I'm going to take the numbers that got published out of October and try to put them in context for you. So we see a lot of numbers, a lot of headlines where people try to get your attention by saying, oh yeah, we have three times the inventory we had back in March. That number doesn't mean much unless you understand seasonality and what the long-term trend is. So hopefully this will put that into perspective for you. All right, the first thing to look at is how are the current homeowners in Denver doing? And on average, the answer is they're doing pretty good. So we have a lot of equity in our homes. And even though equity is going to be coming down as home prices come down. That's still a pretty pretty healthy starting spot back in September. You look at homeownership, 30% of homeowners don't even have a mortgage. They own them free and clear. That helps to kind of stabilize the market. And of those of us that do have a mortgage, 50% are locked in at rates of 3.1% or lower. So we took advantage of that refinance over opportunity over the last couple of years. And that has put us in a much better position where the mortgage payments as a ratio to income are looking fairly healthy. Another way of looking at that is home delin or mortgage payment delinquency rates are incredibly low. National average is above two. Denver metro area, we're below or we're around 1.6% delinquency. That is an incredibly low number. So many different measures, different ways of looking at how our current homeowners doing in Denver. And the answer is we're doing pretty good. Now, if you are in the market to buy today, you'll quickly realize that borrowing money has gotten a lot more expensive. So we went from 3% a year ago to 7% now. We just dipped back below 7% with some good news about inflation slowing, but that is a huge, huge change. That means our 20 year run of really low cost of borrowing has come to an abrupt halt. That quickly moved us out of that strong seller's market into much more of a balanced market today. If we look at just inventory, first let's just look at raw numbers of, of what's on the market today. There's different ways of slicing this up. I just looked at single family homes in the MLS right now, and that kind of shows you that the, the biggest grouping by price segment uh, of homes in Denver is what we call this premier market, $500 to $750,000. And if you wanted to narrow that down even to $100,000 segments, that was just an interesting way of seeing that distribution of home prices and inventory out there today. A much better way of looking at it, though is to, to balance demand with supply and the way we do that is we use the months of inventory metric. Again here I've sliced it by just that premier market just looking at single family residences and the number here is 2.1 months of inventory. That is very very low. If I remove those filters and I just look at all the Denver inventory you'll see we're at three months of inventory. That still puts us in what's defined as a seller's market where we have not enough inventory to have a kind of a free flowing, easy flowing market. So while when it comes to negotiations, when it comes to the overall feel and sentiment, it feels like we're much more in a buyer's market. By the numbers, we're still in a seller's market. The other thing to note from this is that seasonality. You see how throughout the year we have these waves. So a different way of looking at this is just by comparing this October to prior Octobers. And then I, I broke that up into price segments. This shows us a couple of things. It shows us one, the higher the price of the home, the more months of inventory we have. And then it also shows that this last October was a lot more like 2019 October. And the last two years were more of the anomaly where during the pandemic we had very little inventory. The last thing to look at is just the overall Denver home price index. This is kind of generic, it's, it's overall including all kinds of neighborhoods, all price segments, all uh, types of homes, but it does show you that, that big move we had around March of 2020. Once the Fed had come in and said, hey, we're gonna do everything we can to get this market going through, then you see home prices just skyrocket, really rapid increase in price. And then March of this year is when we hit the peak and we've been on the decline. Now this is, like I said, a very general number. If you're curious about what your actual home price is worth, reach out to me, I'm happy to put this together, I'm much more specific specifically for you, but uh, as a general indicator, I think this is a pretty good source. All right, so a ton more information out there, but I'm gonna wrap it up right there. Hopefully what this was able to do is put those numbers in context. So next time you see these, these big headlines, you can kind of think of, well, what does that mean for the big trend? So hopefully you find that valuable. All right, thanks.